Hello, hello, and welcome. Welcome to the Texas Hill Country Advisors Podcast, where we discuss financial education, the stock market, the economy, and how they may apply to you. It's Monday, January 31st, 2022, just after 6 p.m. in Kerrville, Texas. We're streaming from the most wondrous pint and plow, our usual location. I'm your host, Andrew Gay, along with my business partner, Gilbert Pies, and our beloved guest tonight, Keely Herod. Hello, guys. Hello. Good to see you. Glad that y'all are here. I've seen you all day, Andrew. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. About this that. is just a continuation. <laughs> <laughs> I sincerely apologize. For that. Um, all right, so we got a we got a great show for you guys tonight. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your viewership and your participation. We really appreciate it. Um, we're gonna do our market recap as usual, and then we're gonna jump into uh, talking with our friend Keely about some CPA topics. So uh, before we get started, I'm gonna read through our necessary disclosure, and then we'll jump right in. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Next Financial Group. Uh, Next is a member of FINRA and SIPC, Texas Hill Country Advisors, not affiliate of Next Financial Group. This material is not intended as an offer or solicitation uh, for the purchase or sale of any security or other financial instrument. Past performance does not guarantee future performance. All the views expressed are those of Andrew Gay and Gilbert Pies and Texas Hill Country Advisors and not those of Next Financial Group. The S&P 500 is a market cap weighted index composed of common stocks of 500 leading companies in leading industries of the U.S. economy and the Dow Jones Industrial Average is a price-weighted index of 30 actively blue chip stocks. So, speaking of those two indexes, let's take a look at the markets, what happened over the last week. Um, it, was, it was crazy. It was crazy. It was crazy last week. Up and down and back and forth and sideways. All, uh, there's all kinds of stuff going on out there right now, too, right? Plenty of volatility to go around? Yes, yes. Um, well, Jerome Powell spoke Wednesday, right? And uh, we saw the markets go through a nice little sell-off there. Um, but then uh, we rallied back Friday. But nevertheless, we still got a bunch of negative numbers uh, for year-to-date numbers for the indexes. So I'm going to run through those real quick. Dow uh, posted 34,725.47 was its closing number as of last Friday. That's down negative 4.44% for the year. Um, so, and actually, the, the last time we did this, 20, which was the quote from the 21st, we're up a little bit from there, so it was down a little bit more than that. So we're, we're, we're coming back, but we're still negative there for the Dow for the year. The S&P uh, closed at 4,431.85. That is a year-to-date negative 7% um, there for the, for the S&P. And the NASDAQ closed at 13,770.57. That is a year-to-date negative 11.99%, or around about 12%, which is interesting. It actually started the week off uh, and finished the week roughly about the same spot. Uh, so not, not a whole lot happened in there with the NASDAQ, but the markets have been all over the place. Um, oil still climbing. We're at 87.25 uh, a barrel for oil. That's up uh, 16% year-to-date for oil. So I think it's just been steadily climbing. Man, it wants to get to $90 a barrel, doesn't it? And $4 a gallon gas. Yeah, it's coming. I, I filled up today, and I told Beth, I said, you know, I, I paid over $3 a gallon today, and... You know what we should do? We should start. I didn't a, like it. That hurt. We should start a business that sells gas cans, uh, big ones, like 10, 20, 30 gallon cans. Probably make a killing because uh, we can tell people to go out and buy gas. It'd be a run on gas. <laughs> that happened uh, not that long ago, right? Yeah. If my yeah. memory serves me correctly. Well, I think it was for a different reason. But yeah, probably. Yeah, but, but <laughs> nevertheless, it was that was that was a wild week too. Trying to find gas. Guess on Okay, uh, the but speaking of volatility, the VIX closed at twenty seven point six six, which was last Friday, but last week it was flirting with the thirty um, uh, level. So that that index we've mentioned before, it's a fancy way to keep track of the amount of volatility in the markets. Um, so the higher that number, the more volatile uh, markets have seemed. The lower the number, the opposite. So Nirvana as not my words, other analysts' words, uh, around 16-ish. Um, so we're, we're up above 20s and possibly been hitting 30s. I think during COVID it hit 80. But anyway, just to give you some context. Yeah, and, and uh, last week, especially last Monday, was a doozy. It was uh, up how many points? It was... No, well, it was, that, it was, that was the day that, they, that it jumped over 30. Yeah. And then it came back down the rest of the week, but it was still... Um, I, I, I was trying to wipe it from my memory, but it, it was it was, it was was a 1,200-point swing that day? Yes. Yeah, it was, Something like that. But it was all in anticipation of what happened Wednesday, right? Right. When, right. when 
Jerome Powell came out and, and spoke. And then Tuesday was a doozy. Wednesday was a doozy. All of last week was a doozy. Uh, the, the only one that was a good doozy was on Friday because that, that's the yeah the we, market we doozied all the way back up. Yeah. Um, but but we're still negative for the year, so we're still trying to claw back some of that. Those some are some that crazy ground. days. Today was a good day, but uh, we'll yeah, talk about that next week. That's right. Um, all right. Last but not least, let's pull up. We got two pretty pictures for you guys because we're going to talk about uh, the ten year, which finished at one point seven eight two percent. Uh, last Friday, and that's up 17.86% for the year. Um, and we, we hit that home over and over again because that affects lending rates. That affects most of the other bond market. Um, that's a nice metric to keep up with, um, to keep a pulse on what's going on in the credit markets or the bond market um, in the interest rate world. So the first picture that we're going to pull up here is it's uh, you're like, Andrew, are we looking at Wi-Fi signals for the banks? No, that's not what that is. Those are actually... Can you, can you hear me now? That's my yeah. cell phone signal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, no, those are actually projections by the bank name that's above the graph for where they think the interest rates, and when we say interest rates, we're talking about, in this case, the federal funds rate that the Federal Reserve sets, the bottom interest rate, if you will, where they think that thing will be by the end of the year. So the point of all this, without getting into the weeds, is to just say there is a pattern there. Do we see it? It looks like most of them think that it's going to be higher at the end of the year than it is right now, right? Yes. yes. Okay. So um, we thought that was – and if you look at the names, uh, the reason we use that one, you should be able to recognize some of those names. Like, uh, yeah, they're mostly big banks. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And they, 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 do, they do, to be fair to them – they do a lot of research and analysis, yes. and they they do. They have those arms up there, up their companies. Yeah, they do. They do. But but I, I'll, I'll be the first one to tell you that that's crazy. Yeah. I, I don't think uh, one one of those banks says that interest rates are going to go up seven times. I think this yes, year. and I think that's the other that's the other thing I was just going to point out about this picture is if you look at the actual numbers in those bar charts, the the number is kind of what you should focus on is where you think where the bank. Those the, or those uh, companies think the interest rate, federal funds rate, will be at the end of the year. Right. To get there, historically, they have raised, raised. The Federal Reserve has raised by a quarter of a percent or 0.25 percent every time they raise. Right. Most of the time, yeah. But I think, as we've come to find out, and in the next picture that we're going to show, um, that might not always be the be the case from here on out. So we Lot, might... lots of talk that they're going to do 50 point, 50 basis point yes. increments. Um, I, I don't. I don't believe that either. But what do I know? <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, uh, let's. Yeah. So this next picture here. So what we're looking at here is literally. This is from. Oh, and that last picture was from our friends at Bloomberg. This is from a tool that uh, the CME Group. Okay. So CMEGroup.com. You can go there, play around on their website, see what they're about. They have. They offer this tool, which is a Fed Watch tool, and it predicts or not predicts it projects i guess the uh likelihood of rate of a rate hike or the target interest rate okay set by the federal reserve at the corresponding meeting across the top so you can literally go across the top there if you're on this tool and click on these different dates for their different meetings that are already previously set and it'll tell you the chances based on fed fund futures right because you can drill down and figure out how they make these numbers too that's on there as well um, what the prediction or what the percentage chance is of them hiking. So what we're looking at right now is this is March's, March's, March's meeting. Mar okay. meeting right. in March. I don't yes. know why that sounded weird. All right. So they just met last week, like we were just talking about, and they don't meet again until the mid-March. So this is the likelihood of them raising or being at a target rate of 25 to 50 basis points. And if you look at this graph, the that middle bar right there, the, the highest likelihood is 80 roughly about 84 percent and if you went back to last friday it was actually above 90 percent so you're like andrew what happened how well so you're telling me that the likelihood actually dropped when when most of the rhetoric in the market market and narrative says we we're pretty sure they're going to do it well if you look what happened some of that blue bar got cut off at the top that would be above 90 and it got moved down to that other section that says 50 to 75 which is what gilbert just mentioned that there is a slight chance that maybe they raise rates up to half a point instead of a quarter of a point at the march meeting so that's what that graph illustrates right there wanted to show this to you guys because i know sometimes it's hard to muddle through a lot of the the noise and get to the actual data but 
that's it right there. So, and I've I've gone on record saying that I don't think they're going to do. I think they're going to raise interest rates once. Right. Yes. I'm not sure by how much, but I think they're going to do it once, and then that's it. You you did you did never you never said how much. I, that's right. Can. I never said how much. The other thing too is that, you know, the the highest or the most raises that one of these banks indicated was seven. Um, the truth is probably somewhere in the middle. It's going to be between seven right. raises and one raise. Right. <laughs> well, and I think that seven raises their target is closer to two percent or something by the end of the year. Which still, if you just take the number of raises off and look at the the interest rate that still sounds really high uh, here, here's here's my suggestion they're trying to scare inflation out uh was that was that you Luke? god bless you sir sorry. Golly. A silent partner over there. <laughs> sorry guys you you rattled the ground i I'm mean sorry. it was uh man you sure you didn't lose something i <laughs> knocked a couple of teeth loose <laughs> yeah so uh, going, going back to our interest yeah. rate discussion, not to get sidetracked by Lewis's uh, explosion in his head, uh, I, I think that the Feds are trying to scare away inflation. I, yeah. I think they're doing right. their best to talk it away. They're trying to tell everybody this is what we're going to do, and I, I'm I'm willing to bet that they're just trying to buy themselves some time. Right. And they figure that if they scare the market so bad about raising interest rates, that inflation will just magically disappear. Now. It's probably not going to magically disappear, but it's probably not going to be as bad as they think. Um, so right. that, that's why I'm on record saying that I think they'll do it once. Um, well, and as as you're, you know, as I was leaving the office to come up here, yes. there was a Reuters article that came out that said um, same same thing that we've been talking about. Well, maybe not so fast. Yeah. So there's certain there's certain things out there that some of the institutional guys data that they're picking up on that says maybe inflation's starting to cool off just a little bit, um, which could pose a problem for the Fed and what we just talked about. Right, right. Um, and and all of these people that are putting out predictions of three to five to seven raises, um, can can you imagine what what that's doing to their portfolios and what they're doing? I don't know. Well, we don't they that. also use to just like nerd out on the math side real quick? Don't they don't they use a lot of those assumptions to use um, to discount prices? Sure. And stuff? Of course, so. Of wouldn't that be throwing out all? I mean, throwing off all kinds of modeling, and I mean. You, but you know who knows? You know who knows the answer? I think Keeley does. So let's ask uh, yes. Keeley. Yes. What do you think is going to happen with okay. interest rates? That's yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they are going up. I have no idea how many times or how much, but. You think yeah. they're going to? I, yeah, I don't okay. really see them. I just had you know. For sure, but. I have one of my buddies that I, I ran into at the gym today, and, and he's like, man, inflation's hitting me hard. Uh, but he had a story with it, and it made sense. And I was like, man. Inflation's hitting everybody. everybody. And, yeah, and yeah it, it's uh, it's not hard to see the effects of inflation. So are they going to raise rates? Yeah, I think they are. How much and how many times? I have no idea either. But if you find out, Keely, before we do, you please let us know. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah for sure. Well, um yeah, so let's uh, switch gears and we'll move right into oh, talking oh, and, to and, our... And, and yes. before we switch yes. gears, I'm sorry, let, let me just say one more thing. Be, because I've had one, a couple of people ask me, okay, you keep talking about inflation and interest rates and the market and, and what's going on. What should I do? The simple answer to that is nothing. Because I think Appreciate ultimately it. a lot of what is going on right now when it, talk, when it comes to inflation and interest rates and market volatility... Uh, I think a lot of that is just noise because ultimately what what we're, we should focus on are the fundamentals. What, what are the yes. fundamentals of the economy doing? Are things still growing? In fact, there was a nice Wall Street Journal article today about is there can there be growth in the economy with um, higher interest rates? And, and, and the answer is yes. Sure. Uh, and, and we'll talk more about that next week, but I wanted to uh, throw that out there. So what yeah. should you do right now if you've got a portfolio and you're invested? The answer, nothing. Don't do anything. Now, now, or come, come talk to us and get a second opinion. Yeah, we'd be happy to talk to you about that. Maybe, maybe now's a good time to reevaluate, make right. sure, do a gut check on what you're doing, but ultimately, probably you should do nothing. Right. And yes. also, uh, I think a lot of what we're seeing with inflation, we don't really know if it's truly inflation yet. There's a lot of supply chain shortages that sure. have also increase prices. Right. So, Absolutely. really hard to know. Like at the well, pump, what are we paying? Right. Is it all inflation or is well, some of it supply chain? And we've only had, to that point, we've only had since, you know, pick a point that you want to call the recovery after COVID mm-hmm. and then go from that point forward. And it's not a whole lot of data. You know, if things are down one year, that was the problem with 2021. Is like if things are really down in 2020, 
Well, and you're measuring the rate of change, and then they go back to like yeah. normal in 2021. Aren't you going to have a huge rate of change, right? Sure. That was the problem with that. So trying to cut through all that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, okay. So um, CPA talk. Huh. All right. All right. Taxes. So yeah. what a timely uh, point in time to have this podcast. So uh, yes, thank you again for joining us. Uh, Thanks for inviting me on. Absolutely. I know I'm not, probably not the only one that myself and my wife and our household are trying to get our tax affairs in order and hit the filing button on mm-hmm. TurboTax. I'm a DIYer. I, I do it myself. Um, You're going to get all but, of it. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. The IRS's algorithms out there scouring. I'm, I'm going to call somebody in the IRS and say, oh, I'm Andrew. Oh, yeah. Andrew, he's got some fuzzy mat. As you repeat those words, it's just going to just gonna increase the chances. He's from sure. East Texas. He, not oh, to, now you really did not, not to rag on everybody <laughs> from East Texas. But. You have to remember, though, if you guys are business partners, they audit him. Ooh. They find out. Andrew, you think that business isn't going to get pulled can, in? Can you go, no. Oh, man. You you're raining on our brain. Don't break. confuse the issue with the facts. Don't, nobody likes that. Come yeah. on yeah. <laughs> Okay, so, so well, and speaking of being business partners, our last podcast was about starting a business and starting the legal business. aspects and ideas around that. So let's start there. I understand you have uh, a focus on business owners. We can both help, just like Gilbert and I, we, we can help businesses as well. We focus or have, tend to focus more on individuals, um, but that's not always the case, of course, someone like yourself. So you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, uh, well... We also service individuals. Um, I would just say that most of my expertise and my career I've developed over um, or working with businesses. So that's definitely, I think, where my strong suits are. Uh, but we handle quite a few individuals. So I don't want to like, preempt that yeah. you know, individuals are not welcome. That's not the case at all. But, um, but yeah, it, I know a lot of our individual clients also have side businesses or right. they're you know full-time sole proprietors or they're one in the same we see that or a lot yeah you know it's like a business owner yeah. has accumulated a certain amount of wealth that has a complicated financial picture yes. find, them what, find their way to us mm-hmm. and they are technically a business owner sometimes yeah. they're so active in managing that business yeah and then sometimes individuals can end up with really complex returns and have no business activity just the investments alone can be very bitcoin yeah, offshore accounts oh my God. A lot of investments now are uh, their PTP, the pass-through partnership, so you end up with a K-1 sure. and you have no idea what to do with it. And it can... hold, hold this a little closer. Oh, sorry. I so, want to hear your wonderful Is that better? Ideas. That okay. is good. <laughs> so, yeah, the, that could be a little complicated. Even though that K-1 form is typically related to a business, that person that is receiving that K-1 probably doesn't consider themselves a business owner because it's more of an investment. So investments can definitely be oil, a little... Oil difficult. and gas royalties around here are a big mm-hmm. deal too, right? Yeah, yeah we have a lot okay. of oil and gas clients. And, um, now, w- one of the things that we talked about with uh, Greg last week and Chad is uh, the need for legal help mm-hmm. when you set up a business. Why should a small business owner consider visiting with a CPA? Because one of the top things that Greg and Chad said last week was, in addition to getting some legal help setting up your business, you also need to find a competent CPA to help you. What are some of the things that you as a CPA can do to help a business owner, either in the starting phase of their business or or even after they've been in business for a long time? Um, Well, yeah, probably two different scenarios there. So initially... um, I mean, just like how Chad and Greg were kind of driving the point home that without that advisor, you can end up making some very costly mistakes. Like I see that a lot too, where people misunderstand something. They they read some part of the tax code and Uh they think "Uh, I can do this, but then you misinterpret this one very critical detail, and your whole plan is right. (laughs) <laughs> I can I can attest to that because and I think what one of the things Greg mentioned the way he said it was like he gave the analogy about a dentist right and he's like I could probably do the task but I have no idea what I'm looking at yes. right so like I can do my taxes I've done my taxes we have a lot of crossover in our industry and what we do mm-hmm. but at the same time I don't always have the confidence that I know for sure what I'm looking at. And what I was right. just talking to you about before we started, exactly. this, yeah, that's a good example. <laughs> I was like, what, where, you know, I had to go through research on their web, irs.gov, through their website, find a certain publication, figure out how they handled this one issue and how they put out the correspondence. And it was, at the end of it, yeah, I feel like I got the answer, but 
how much time did you spend? Do you, are you certain you got the answer? Like, yeah, exactly, right. exactly. And probably like mm, two hours mm-hmm. of reading. Yeah. And, you know, so... Uh, well, and, and let's face it, the IRS are the, is the last government agency you want to have problems with going back and forth with letters and requests for this and requests for that. They're so helpful, yeah. though. They, they're so willing to send you correspondence, <laughs> you know? And not answer the phone. <laughs> Yes. I've been trying to send the same facts for almost four weeks now, and I cannot get it to go through because it's right. some fact up. Well, when that same government agency tells you explicitly that do not call us, mm-hmm. <laughs> that, that tells you all you need to know right there. They, they don't have, they're understaffed, they're undermanned. Yeah. Uh, they, they don't have the capability of helping individuals, and who knows if you're getting the right answer. Yeah. Right. So, okay, so starting a business... Right, and that, yeah. that's kind of your, your area. Yeah, so definitely on. starting out on the right foot. So um, a lot of new business owners have the same questions. Um, what can I deduct? How do I track this? You know, do I have to have a separate bank right. account? Right. Um, so that new business owner may have a completely different set of questions and priorities and concerns than the guy that's been in business for five, 10 years that has a, you know, has a good solid footing on everything for the most part and is in more growth mode, maybe even thinking about selling. Right. Those are two very different conversations. So, um, but kind of to just piggyback off of Chad and Greg, um, a lot of the problems that I see could be prevented with a, just a quick consultation. Right. I mean, just even just, you know, if you want to still do your own tax return, if you feel like, oh gosh, I'm reading through this stuff and I, it's just over my head, sometimes just paying for that one hour consultation is really all you need to get in the right direction and right. make sure that you have your questions answered, uh, maybe help as far as like how much right. money should you be putting aside, quarterly payments. A lot of people have never had to deal with that before. I, w- I, just, went, I went through that. Yeah. I didn't really know what I was doing. I overpaid my first year. Well, you that's know. usually exactly opposite of what I see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also, I'm also, I was, you know, working as a financial yeah. advisor. I kind of knew. You, yeah, you probably yeah. have a leg up on most people. You, you yeah, but at the, but I still, you know, I still had to muddle through that process and try mm-hmm. to figure out, you know, how they see that and all the all the guardrails. So. Yeah, definitely. Well, you can not only help people with uh, what they can deduct, but you can help them plan for how they're going to pay those bills. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, just strategizing and and talking different scenarios. Like a lot of a lot of people that uh, are just starting out, they they hear from you know their their cousins, neighbors, aunt that you know an S corp is what they need. And sometimes that's exactly what they need, but a lot right. of times it's it's more than what they're bargaining for. They there's a lot of uh, administrative burden. Um, it may not actually be the the most tax efficient. You might be right. giving up some things that you don't intend. So it's there is no one size fits all, and that's the thing about sitting down with somebody and actually having a consultation that's about you, not about what your right. friend knows or you know what somebody's neighbor did. Um, <laughs> that, sound, that sounds familiar. Your goals, <laughs> yes. not other Your people's goals. goals. Yeah. You know, Andrew and I have been in the business long enough to know enough about taxes to give people a general idea of what to consider. But mm-hmm. we specifically and, and uh, are not tax advisors. So right. we always preface everything that we say when it comes to taxes about, well, h- here's what I've seen in the past. But, you know, you should really get your own tax advice. Right. And and a lot of times that that means go to go visit the CPA. Mm-hmm. So you, I'm sure you work frequently with uh, uh, lawyers and and financial advisors. Mm-hmm. You can help people work together, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I had some new clients came into my office today and they had a lot of legal questions, so I gave them Chad's number. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah. you know, a lot of times there's you know there's a little bit of overlap probably in those there three is. areas that you're talking about, and uh, you just kind of have to know how to answer that and most of the time it's you know an llc can work this is how it will affect you tax wise but or these are your options but you need to go talk to a lawyer and make sure that's what you want um so yeah uh okay so one thing i wanted to ask because i thought our discussion that we had last week was really good because um it was a really good one well i feel like i I I haven't shared shared it on our page no like yes I saw that. thank you thank you <laughs> i thought i thought there were great there were so many little nuggets in there mm-hmm. but um if you are if you if 
uh, if I'm starting a business or if I need to come, if I need to come see you, I, I understand in my mind that it has to do with taxes, mm -hmm. but that's not always the case, right? Because like one of the things they talked about and even Gilbert and I doing the show is that there's a, sometimes we find that there's a lot of ambiguity around what we actually do because, mm -hmm. you know, if you're not in our industry, you, you don't know. So I look at a CPA and I'm like, all right, taxes. And then like I also because, I, you know, from schooling and stuff, I know there's audit also. Mm -hmm. But could you could you maybe break that down and say, OK, for like the the average bear, mm -hmm. you know, you offer tax services, right, mm -hmm. that you charge a fee for, but are there other services or other yeah. things you can help with as a CPA? Yeah, I mean, just in general accounting and tax, um, okay. we, our firm no longer does audit, but in general, a CPA can do when you audits. Say, and when you say accounting, you're talking about like bookkeeping? Yeah, bookkeeping, okay. accounting. Um, okay. What about payroll? Payroll, yeah, that kind okay. of falls under okay. that umbrella. All so right. basically okay. all of those type of services uh, we handle. A lot of companies outsource their entire accounting function to us. I mean, we have oh, wow. multiple bookkeepers and, I mean, employees of different calibers and levels. Sure. So um, outsourcing to a firm, you get somebody higher level like a CPA. You have somebody that can handle the day-to-day -day stuff and everything in between. And time. Rather, that little question time, you yeah. just asked me. <laughs> yeah, because it's like you don't have to spend the time doing exactly. that anymore, man. But it's, it might be a, a good option for a smaller business that, that wants kind of a blend of those different types of services. So they, they may want somebody you know, a higher level that can answer more strategic questions, sure. uh, more proactive right hand holding and then right. they still need their bookkeeping done right if okay. you just go hire a bookkeeper you're probably not going to have somebody that's at the caliber that you need to get that higher level but if you outsource to a firm like ours that has that more of a range you yeah kind of okay. get to tap into all of those different types of employees and mm -hmm. you just you know pay whatever the fee is but and yeah. Um, okay. So rather than having all of those different levels of employees, which you may not be able to have one of them at full time. So to get all of those different types of employees employed, you're talking multiple, multiple people. So several hundred right. thousand dollars to have right. a whole finance department. So it's a good way to kind of tap into that same resource without having all of that overhead. Love it. That's awesome. It's yeah, cheaper, yeah. man. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, n nowadays um, it, it is makes more sense to outsource some of the functions. I think even Greg mentioned it the other day, right? He said, um, do what you do best and outsource the rest. Yeah. And so finance is hmm. not, and accounting are, is not most people's strong suit. Because mm -hmm. uh, when you sign that uh, uh, 1040, <laughs> you're, you're, you're signing off that it's, it's uh, accurate it's and correct and good. And yeah. if you make a boo-boo, <laughs> uh, you're going to have to go stand in front of the IRS yourself. Yeah. But the if hook. you have a CPA, well, they're going to do that for you so that <laughs> they can offer that. Yeah. So, so yeah. when it comes to individuals um, or, or even businesses, uh, it's fair to say that you don't want them to just show up with a shoebox at the end of the year no. and say, here's all my receipts, figure it out. Oh, God, please don't do that. There you <laughs> go. So damage control. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, and sometimes if, if you are one of those people, uh, it might just be worth picking up the phone yeah. call and saying, here's what I have. What, you know, how, what format do you want this yeah. in? I mean, you may it is, actually, it is totally okay yeah. because I used to be like that mm -hmm. before, you know, I was, uh, you know, I don't know, 10 years ago when I was in my twenties, <laughs> you know, it's like, I, I understand that that's totally okay. You're just bragging now. You're just it, no, I'm I, just saying. I it's, ago, no. days, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. I'll start with the gray hair thing again. <laughs> no. Um, but, but you know it's that's important i think for people to understand that you don't you're not just magically at that point you mm -hmm. have to work at it which you know sometimes the start of that journey can be the phone call yeah. yeah yeah exactly i mean i think a lot of people probably are better off than what they think they are i mean I, and now depending on how you have your stuff organized if you just keep it all in one bank account one credit card whatever your bank or your credit card might even be able to pull a report that may not be entirely accurate, but may be close enough that you can save a lot of time. So there's a lot of things huh. available that you may not even realize you have. But I mean, I we don't need all of the receipts. We just need the information summarized so that we can actually prepare right. the return. So 
Um, I mean, it doesn't have, to, we don't have to see all of the receipts. We don't even want to see all the receipts. Now, I can now tell you're, that for sure. <laughs> now you're giving me flashbacks to a banking career, printing out yeah. ungodly amounts of statements for people tax <laughs> time. Right. Well, yeah. well, and let's face it, um, the sooner they meet with you, the sooner you can give them direction on how to organize their information, how you can help them minimize the cost, the mm-hmm. time, and the expense to, to file. And so in, in many ways, you help them save money by not having to screw around with a lot of the yeah, trying yeah. to do the cleanup afterwards. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, okay. So I know we're kind of winding down, but I wanted to mention at least one other thing before we jump off. Um, do you do volunteer work? Do you mind yeah, talking about that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I Well, yeah, I volunteer with a couple organizations um but i think one of them do you so do you actually have an option for someone to learn quickbooks do you formally do that right now or not? i we may that's do what like I, a that's training what i was going system for. for a couple okay. clients but I, I teach a quickbooks class at the christian women's job corps but that's just on a volunteer basis for their organization I see yeah. okay um but but if somebody wanted to pay you for an hour of your time or somebody else's in your office time yeah. to learn QuickBooks, you could you could do that. Generally, generally it's you know a, an issue that we're trying to help somebody out with. We don't really have like training classes. Mm. Not to say that we wouldn't one day, but for the most part, it, it's you know if you're having a hard time trying to figure out how to you know build this report or set up your chart of accounts or something like that, then yes, we'll consult. Okay. Okay. That, All right. Well, that's um, good to know. Maybe that's something to think about. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, Maybe <laughs> do do something like that. So, you know, offer the service to help people with QuickBooks. Gil- I, Gilbert wants to learn QuickBooks. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> no. What are you talking about? Are you crazy? <laughs> the less I know about QuickBooks, the better. <laughs> uh, well, if if somebody wanted to contact you and yeah. visit with you, tell us where how they can reach you. Uh, well, phone, email. Uh, our website is madcpa.com. <laughs> Love it. It's so awesome. <laughs> mad C- Why is it mad That's CPA? A, so Mike DeVille was the one that started the firm initially, and his initials are mad, but it's funny, okay, so we'll okay, keep yeah, it. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love those, like, the Mad Hatter images, yeah. what popped in. Because wasn't the Mad Hatter a, a, an accountant? Wasn't That's why he has the little ticket with the numbers oh, in Oh, maybe. The, I don't I, know. Oh, look at I that. I, I just dropped learned, some knowledge. I just I'm not dropping some knowledge on y'all. Yep, there we go. Aha, look at that. I just learned that Scrooge was an accountant. The, oh, the, the the counting firm, I guess, is what they used to call okay. CPA firm. Okay. So he was okay. a he okay. was a cranky CPA too. Mad yeah, <laughs> madcpa.com. Okay. okay, all okay. right. And then what's your phone number? Uh, two five seven three one one two. Call or text. Okay, and then you have okay. a website too, right? Yep. Yeah, Mad I think uh, we've got it up there on right now. Mm-hmm. And a Facebook page because you shared our mm-hmm. our podcast or, or show from last Friday. So thank okay. you for that. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Excellent. Awesome. So people can just reach out, contact you, and say, Hey, listen, here's where I'm at. How help. can you help me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> help. Help. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, we, we, um, I, I've been, of course, in the business a long time. So is Andrew and we could tell you some, uh, doozy tax stories too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Pe- people that come to us when they're in the middle of hell with mm-hmm. the IRS and, right. you know, they, they think that we can solve the problem where well, we're financial advisors, not tax accountants. And we can't really give you advice, but let us hook you up with somebody that can help you. And, right. You know, taxes are one of those things that, Nobody really likes to do, but it's mm-hmm. it's a requirement. It's it's right. a requirement, and we all, for whether we like to or not, have to pay our fair share. Right. <laughs> but our the only s- our silent partner in everything we do is yes, your Uncle yes. Sam. I, I always tell yeah. people that Uncle Sam has his arm around you all the time, and whenever you do something good, he's he's happy for you, and mm-hmm. whenever you do something bad, he's sad for you, but he's still reaching in your pocket for his <laughs> yeah, no for his what. cut of the deal, and. Uh, <laughs> But the mm-hmm. more help that you can get keeping him out of your life is probably good, and that's where CPA comes in. Yeah. 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 Excellent. Awesome. Well, thank you again yeah. for joining us. Enjoyed thank it. Hopefully, hopefully we'll see you back. And, and um, I, I can tell you right now that, that we would like to have you back, you know, maybe a couple of times, a few times a year to talk about uh, some ideas and tips for mm-hmm. the end of the year. And then, of course... You know, maybe when April 15th comes around. Well, maybe we'll talk to you after April. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you're <laughs> Let's probably do after, busy. Yeah, probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. probably, probably yeah. busy. But, but, you know, maybe some tax strategies to come up with and yeah. more specific mm-hmm. stuff. So thank yeah. you for joining us. Yeah, thank yeah. you guys for inviting me on again. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you all. And uh, we will see you all next Monday. All right. Good night. Good night. Stay frothy. <laughs> <laughs>